get a scale. I've weighed them all. For the ultralight guns, what I'm trying to look at is the ultralight red dot gun is, you know, five pounds with a sling, right, uh, suppressor, everything on it, right? The, the long range lightweight gun, right, is uh, eight pounds with suppressor, bipod, and scope, right? So what I try to do is I tried to buy a bunch of uh, kind of civilian grade lasers, right? Look, um, there's civilian and then there's kind of law enforcement military grade lasers, class one, class three, right? Um, what I try to do is create a class one laser, especially me as a retired guy, uh, the class one laser, what's going to happen with that is, look, I'm not going to shoot as a civilian in the United States more than 100 yards, generally speaking, especially with night vision and laser. Why is because you may not be able to discriminate too much farther than that. Right. And really all the civilian lasers, this is where they start to peter out. Right. So I tried to look for something that would shoot to 100 yards well right and have a white light right because all rifles need a white light or pistol right an ir laser right and an ir flood now i didn't say a visible laser however that's nice to have why most visible lasers are slaved these days so you have you zero the visible laser during the daytime and then the, the ir one zeroed for the night right so it's always a really good thing however I don't really use a laser during the day. I only use it for night. So I don't technically need one, even though a lot of guys these days, it's nice to have, right? So what did I come up with? I came up with a few things, right? And what we have is all the lasers I bought um, in trying to figure this out, weighing them, right? What we have on the table is this is a little cheap green laser and uh, IR laser and when I say cheap it's rechargeable and it was cheap like 80 bucks or something <laughs> and it only lasted me like an hour the first time I used it but this is a cheap little light right this is only a couple ounces um, uh, and it's a green and an IR laser and it's rechargeable so I bought this right uh, this thing is made by, I don't even know, like this thing is, is so cheap. I don't even know who made this, right? I don't know nothing about this. Uh, highlight, <laughs> highlight. This is a highlight, right? Uh, okay. Super cheapy. I bought it off Amazon. <laughs> uh, I figured what the heck, right? Okay. This is a stream light. This one's 3.8 ounces. This is actually pretty good. What it does is it has a white light a visible laser and an IR flood, right? The IR flood is pretty good. The laser, these are class one stuff, right? It'll go 100 yards, it does well, right? Uh, it doesn't have a, a, a visible laser. That's the only thing it doesn't have, right? But it has white light, IR laser, IR flood, all not too bad. Um, so this is a very viable option. Now, this is a Luna. Um, this is either uh, a flood or a laser, but what this does is it's, it's like an old school mad light is you could adjust the beam up or down. Uh, this is class one or class three, right? However, the class three, uh, it has a filter on the end of the lens. If you take that filter out, right, you'll get the class three laser, but generally they sell them as a class one laser, right? But I'll tell you this, when you dial this thing in, like I could, I could signal the space shuttle in outer space. These Lunas, they're cheap, but this is one of the best IR floodlight devices I have ever used, right? So this is a cheapy, it's light, and it's a favorite of mine, right? Now, this is a longtime favorite of mine, the IR Surefire X400. We got IR, we got white light on the vampire uh, head light head switches from white to IR and it's got an IR laser on the top right so you could do white light or you could do IR flood IR laser or just laser right uh, this best bang for the buck for a long time it's light however it's not stream light light it's a little heavier than the stream light the next thing the stream light does is if you mount this on a rifle on the top rail right the stream lights lower what ends up happening is when you're trying to look down the rail of a of a 
of a red dot, the laser, the tall part of the surefire blocks the red dot, right? Where this one's lower, you can still see your red dot, right? But the Surefire for a long time, this has been one of my go-to favorites. Uh, this is brand new. This is a Steiner PL. Uh, this is actually a pistol light, goes on the bottom of your pistol. However, I was gonna try this for with a rifle as well. Now this has white light, IR light, visible laser, IR laser. So this kind of does it all. It's about five ounces ish, right? Pretty small device, uh, a little bit bigger, little, little bulkier than the Streamlight, right? Probably about the same bulk wise as the Surefire, but this one does it all at about five, over five ounces. Okay, this Hollow Sun. This is this is a new one. This one does it all. This does white light. Uh, IR flood, <laughs> visible laser, IR laser. So this does it all. These two were probably the most expensive out of all of them. Um, this does it all. This is about eight ounces, right? But it does it all. You can see it's a pretty small package, right? But as compared to the Streamlight, a little bigger, little heavier, right? So this does it all as well. Now, what I wanted to do was, as I was looking at these lightweight lasers and buying these devices, I realized why would I want the IR floodlight on the gun, right? Why would I want it on the gun? Think about it, right? The gun is the laser. This is where I'm aiming at night with my night vision, right? But the floodlight or any type of IR light should be on my helmet, right? Because this is in parallel, if I, put, if I put a device on my helmet as a floodlight, anywhere I look, I would have flood. Then all I'd have to do is reach down uh, or reach up to my helmet. I could adjust it right to brightness setting I need and I could do aiming independently, right? So it led me to think I don't really need an IR flood onto my rifle. That might save me some weight there, right? So I bought this Luna. These things are killer floods. And I tried to use the Luna with the little rechargeable laser, right? This is a good news, bad news story. <laughs> uh, the Luna IR flood, good news. This little laser, bad news, <laughs> right? So if I could find a new laser or visible laser, a small postage stamp size one, this would be the best bang for my buck because all I'd have is this little postage stamp type laser onto the gun and I'd have this onto my head. This would be the best way to lighten the rifle and still have it all, right? Except for this laser doesn't last very long, right? So that's one of the ways I was looking at it. So if you wanna lighten the gun, you could take some stuff off the gun to lighten it, right? Now, what would you need to take off the gun? I would say first and foremost, the IR flood, right? Because the night vision needs IR light to work, especially if it's super dark. If it's not dark, you don't need IR flood, right? But if it gets dark, it can get dark enough where IR doesn't work at all. Infrared night vision doesn't work at all, right? So you'd need some type of IR light. If you mounted this somewhere on the helmet and could adjust it from the helmet, right? That'd be less weight on the rifle, right? Fatiguing your arms, making you less accurate, making you less fast, right? So this is one way to do it. However, Streamlight figured that whole process out in this 3.8 ounce thing, right? So why not just mount this on your gun and then I have a white light IR and an IR flood for the smallest package and the smallest weight, right? So uh, this is kind of what I got in testing. This was my thoughts. Uh, I still have to test them. I still have to come up with a, a best bang for the buck for you guys, right? Um, I'm just gonna have to test all the lasers, all the floods against all the lasers and floods, what I'm gonna do next. Here's kind of what I think the winners are gonna be without testing it at all, right? I think the Luna is going to be a permanent addition to every helmet I own. Why? This thing's only, uh, I don't know, like 300 bucks. They're, they don't cost much. It's got screws on it. I'm just gonna screw it right to my plastic helmet. Every helmet with night vision will have an illuminator, right? That could be an illuminator, or if you dial it all the way down, it could be a laser. So I could use this as a pointer if it was mounted on my helmet. I could see something. I could dial it down to a pointer and be like, hey, right there, right? And I could show something to someone else. So I think I'm gonna mount these on my helmets 
freeing up weight on my rifle. Now, it does put weight on the helmet, and I would tell you, you know, putting weight on the helmet is generally a bad thing because of the neck muscles, but I would say this thing's only a couple ounces. It wouldn't be that big of a deal, right? So that's one of the ways I'm gonna go, and then I'm gonna try to find a postage stamp, like small IR laser to put on the rifle, but this doesn't give me a white light solution yet. Make sense? White light, IR laser, right, uh, IR flood. White light, IR laser, IR flood, right? The streamlight's a little lighter, and these are, these are the same thing. So what I'm gonna try to do is figure out when I get it all mounted, what's the lightest weight I could put on the rifle that does the capability I need, which is see, aim, shoot, discriminate, at night through night vision at 100 yards and in. Could you shoot a little farther? Sure, generally I go to 200. However, for a realistic capability for what I'm looking for out of civilian devices is I'm looking for just that 100 yard laser that's good enough and that 100 yard flood that's good enough.